So last time we did a trash stream, we had John Doyle on, who did the, uh, what was that video called? It was like the very real link between blah de blah and blah de blah. If you've spent more shush, than shush, 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 five just, minutes. Just one second. It was the very real link between Satanism and liberalism. It was an hour and a half long. An hour and a half. This is the very real link between Christianity and conservatism. So let's watch John Doyle do another video that just sucks, that no one wants to watch. <laughs> John Doyle's a child? Well, it's because he is a child to everybody. The very real link between Christianity and conservative conservatism by John Doyle, which, by the way, John Doyle has figured out how to focus his camera correctly. We did it. We got there. Not that I have a lot to say for set design. Although we will get it, we'll we'll get to it. I'm still waiting for uh, 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 some stuff from Amazon, but we'll get there. If you've spent more than five minutes operating in the realm of American politics, and in particular right-wing American politics, then you've probably heard something to the effect of, America was built upon Christian values. Christian values are what made America great, what made America exceptional. And okay. this is true. But because we're lazy and we enjoy the temporary perceived comforts of a secular society, we also think that this country was built upon religious freedom or something, which isn't true. That's, of course, what they tell you in public school to justify the promotion of the religions of the state, uh, Satanism, atheism, progressivism, etc. Satanism and atheism and progressivism. Dude, I can't... I really can't believe... I'm really surprised, I guess. Maybe I can believe it. I guess I'm just really surprised that John Doyle has just become, like, a, a, a super unsophisticated, like, just religious... He's basically like Venom Fang X, but a little less cringy. Which is wild, because John Doyle's incredibly cringy. But, it, but like, he's just old-school Christian at this point. Venom Fash X, true. Just like, you know, in the uh, the latter half of the 20th John century. John Doyle's a human, he's six free chihuahuas in a skin suit, prove me wrong. Free speech wow. and free expression, man, to promote communism and degeneracy throughout the culture. Why would you ever take these people at their word? What do you mean, free speech? What are you, what are you talking about? Hold on. We're going to have to pull out the old Constitution. We'll go to the Bill of Rights, I guess. First thing, the First Amendment says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. And it also, and the second thing it says, it won't prohibit free exercise thereof, of that religion. The third thing it says is no abridging to the freedom of speech. It's, it's, it's right there. I, have I ever shown you that the inside of my fucking, of my, it's like pulling apart because, you know, I reference it a lot, you know, it, it's got a, you, you could tell a book that's loved when it's torn apart like this, uh, you know, I'm just saying, maybe I'm the real patriot after all. But yeah, so they tell you that the founding fathers were refugees fleeing religious persecution, just like the Muslims are now. Yeah, well, that would be like saying people who wanted to go to Five Guys instead of In-N-Out were seeking dietary freedom. They're still eating burgers, bro. Virtually every European American identified as a Christian in 1776, except for a couple thousand Jews, bro. When they say that the Constitution was written for a religious people and that it wouldn't function with any other population, they were talking about Christians, bro. It never would have occurred to them that they'd be dealing with all this other nonsense in their country, bro. But... All this other nonsense? We fumbled for a century or so, and so now we have to figure this out. Well, but the First Amendment says that freedom of religion and separation of church and state, no, it doesn't actually. First of all, separation of church and state is not a real thing. That's not written anywhere in any of the founding documents of this country. That is in reference to a letter that Thomas Jefferson penned in the early 1800s, but that's about it. Secondly, properly understood in terms of... Wait, but Thomas Jefferson is one of the main architects of the Constitution. He wrote it, and then he went on, like, this is like saying that, like, all of the, all of the papers that, that people wrote about the Constitution and America and everything in, in the founding of it, like, there's just so many things written outside of the Constitution, right? And it also doesn't take into account, like, case law and the rule of law, the way that we operate in this country and have always operated. Like, it just, like... 
people have a, a kind of a rudimentary understanding of what the Constitution is. The Constitution is like, like here are here are our limits. Here's the tippy top of our limits on stuff. Now figure out the rest. And the rest of it, as long as it's congruent with the Constitution, is probably legal, right? That's like the whole thing. Our laws are not, you have freedom of speech. No, the laws on freedom of speech are are specific. There's different things that happen. Like you can't, for instance, uh, uh, harass people with the intent of violence. Even though you have the freedom of speech, technically, by just by just the, the Constitution, you have the freedom of speech to just say whatever the fuck you want, right? However, we also understand that... I kind of itch on the top of my head I can't get. Uh, he, he, there's, there, there's an understanding that there's some speech that violates another person's rights. Open threats of violence, instigation, stuff like that, inciting violence towards people. These are things that are illegal. Is that an abridgment of your freedom of speech? Technically. But... It's because we understand that societally it's not beneficial to allow all speech. Right? That's just what it is. In terms of how our country was established, it is a separation of church from <coughs> state, which means that the intent was to prevent the state from interfering with the practice of religion, specifically Christianity. Which it doesn't interfere with the religion. Which is why the First Amendment says that Congress can't establish a religion, except that it has, hasn't it? This no. is not exactly a fresh take, but what's the significant what? difference between what Congress and the federal government have done and what an uh -huh. official established religion would do? They have their holidays, they have their saints, their martyrs, they have their myths, their narratives, uh, they have their rituals and sacrifices, they have their slogans, prayers, even, like, it's all there. And truly, <laughs> I don't <laughs> I really, it's interesting that the religious right does this pretty regularly, where to even argue the thing, they have to cheapen the idea of what a religion actually is. Like, if I'm a religious person, I feel offended at, at any person that, that does this kind of thing, where they go, yeah, well, religion is basically just a blasé set of rules. It means nothing. It just means having some rules and things we often do. This is the same thing as saying, because there are rules in basketball, there are rituals and there are sayings in basketball. I'm going to get jockey as fuck in a second, okay? So every basketball game starts off with the national anthem of the country it's played in uh, in the NBA. So there's one team in, the, in Canada right now, the Toronto Raptors, although it used to be the, the, the Grizzlies stuff, but don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> they play the national anthem. That's a ritual. Uh, they have the starting lineup. uh, uh sort of announced that's a ritual they have a tip off they have specific rules um they have specific things that happen they have different chants that happen in the games uh they have uh different assigned um point values to things they have different uh uh you know and there's 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 certainly the exalted among the members of the nba people like lebron james uh, kobe bryant michael jordan shaquille o'neal you probably heard these names even if you're not a jock um you know, that, that that are sort of exalted over the other members, much like Saints. <laughs> there's literally, in football, a team named the Saints. Uh, there's a team in, in the uh, uh, MLB in baseball named the Padres, which is, you know, father, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> like priest and shit. So, like, look, a religion is a religion. Things that have rules and have, have rituals and have sayings and slogans are not all religions. Cheapening the definition of religion only serves to make your position weaker, John, every time you do it. I don't mean to come off as disrespectful to the non-Christians in the audience, but... You don't think it looks sexy, though? Klepto? The outfit looks so hot. Like, warm. But not, like, sexy? You don't find it to be sexually... Gra well, that's the wrong button. You don't find it to be sexual? Come on. Are you telling me you wouldn't want me to pop this top button just a little bit? Okay. All right. But this is also clear to me now that I think it would actually be more disrespectful to you if I were to try to dress it up or sugarcoat it. 
So at the very least, I am honest, if perhaps off-putting, and there's a couple quotes that I think work well here. <clears throat> I can't remember to whom exactly they're attributed, but the first one is, those who think religion and politics aren't linked understand neither, and this is true, and we'll explain why as we continue, but I want you to think about that as well as this one, which you can probably relate to as someone who knows about politics, who understands what's going on, where we're headed, and you talk to your friends and family who just don't get it, and you feel like you're going crazy, right? Like, you almost just want to shake them, like, like, why don't you get it? Listen to me, damn it! Like, they just won't wake up. Well, it's the same thing with... Dude, he's losing his mind. Christianity. It's that old saying, you know, don't ever discuss religion and politics. It's impolite. It's like, what else would you talk about? Like, once you get it, once you see it, you can't unsee it. And you can't help but talk about it because everything else just seems like a distraction. And such is, of course, the nature of knowing the truth, going down the rabbit hole. Like you... The nature of knowing the truth. You can never see things Good the God. same way. And He's lots of people would prefer to live wild. in a state of like blissful ignorance, which is understandable, but no one can honestly return to that state once they see the truth. And so in the last video, we discussed the links between liberalism and Satanism. And this is actually technically part four of this series, the final part, because we had two prerequisite videos that explain concepts that we built off in other videos. And so I'll put links to all of the other videos in the series in the description, plus a little video called How We Let the 2010s Change Politics Forever, which explains the contrast between Christian morality and what is being promoted uh, throughout society by the left. But in this video, we're going to cover so many important things. And so please watch all the way through, even if you disagree. So at least it can be a fair disagreement. But I think that you'll be with me on at least a few of these points, even if you disagree with the thesis of this video, which Skip I guess I'll say intro. now is that <clears throat> if there is to be conservatism, meaning the conservation of the traditional American society, mm -hmm. then there has to be Christianity. They are inextricably linked. You cannot have America without conservatism and you cannot have conservatism without Christianity simply because America was built by Christianity. Hard disagree. You can have America without conservatism. You you can do it. You can you can do it. Now he he might argue a very. I I guess if you're going to strip away what it means to be politically conservative and just mean that to name it to maintain the name of America, you must conserve the name of America. I guess. Sure, but like politically conservative, not just like any form of conservation whatsoever. Because, like, leftists aren't anti-conservation. You know what I mean? There's lots of things that we'd like to conserve. Our, our natural uh, uh, environment in the Earth is a great example of the number one thing that we would like to conserve. Um, community and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, the establishment of, uh, of, like, you know, human rights and stuff like that. Of course we'd like to conserve these things. Um, in, in fact, at a certain point, leftists become conservative... If we get what we want, you know what I mean? We conserve the good stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, sure. I guess. But that's 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 not what politically conservative means, right? We'd be stripping that of context. You can have an America without political conservation. Um, because what you're conserving is... What political conservatives do is they try to conserve nothing, really. They just sort of hate stuff. It's, it's spite politics. I'm trying to think of something that that like they advocate for like as a as like a prescription for like helping things cuz usually what they do is they're like oh, I don't want to help that situation. I just want it to stop. You know what I mean? Like crime. They're just like why don't they just stop crime? Crime, how do you stop it exactly? I know how to stop it. Because you have to ask what crime is. You know what I mean? What is crime? I'll tell you. What's crime? Klepto guy. Since you're a big smart boy. Crime is breaking laws. Yes, it is. Right. And what is most crime? Like, why, do, why does most crime happen? Real, real smart fella in chat. Why does crime happen? I'm going to see if you can just get the answer correct. Let's see what happens. Come on, buddy. <clears throat> Why does crime occur? Why are you condescending me? Because you're asking dumb questions. So now we're going to be condescending. Why does crime happen? I mean, is that how you get your point? I mean, yeah, yeah. Why does crime happen? Like, why do you think most crime occurs? I think it's easy, right? Crime happens because people break laws. Okay, so it's circular. That's pretty smart. But, like, what's the real answer? <laughs> Literally the most childish take I've ever heard, just stop crime. Even teenagers understand more than that. Of course. 
a lot of people are trying to scream different answers at you. Klepto, why do you think most people commit crime? Like, what do you think crime usually does? He's trolling. You think it's a troll? Every I mean, it happens so often. Is that the troll? Is that the common troll? It's too hard to read. You wanted a voice. Mint Kuro, actually, eight months, dude. Eight months of the C word. Corn! Nope, that's not the one, Argonian. <clears throat> Can't read caption, must not be human. Holy fucking shit, dude. You have stalled my entire stream here. Respect my opinion. I can't even, I can't do very simple tasks. True. Do I get a new corn when I'm sub three years? Yeah, you get a new badge every, every six months. I don't know what it, what color it is. It's just a capture. Yeah, you joined, right? Pretty easy. Pretty quick. Easy and quick. And we had to do it because of, uh, you know, dumb dums trying to raid the Discord. Holy shit. Is this real? All right, let's turn on some music. Three years, hell yeah, almost there. God damn it, gingerbread fetus. God damn it. <clears throat> if you can't handle that, you probably shouldn't talk. I mean, it's just wild stuff, right? It's so easy. All right. <laughs> Maybe you should get your grandkid to help you. True. All right. Uh, we're just going to go back to the video. Fuck this. You're dumb. <laughs> All right. Back to the video. Slow and dumb. If you try to run this system without Christianity, you are setting yourself up for failure. And so now we will explain why Christian philosophy is the opposite of leftist philosophy and why they'll always be at odds with each other, why the Constitution cool. seemingly failed, why the Second Amendment seemingly failed, why the, Constitution uh, the truth failed. about liberal Christianity, how liberal democracy hides its tyranny and maintains its power, how religion is inevitable, how the immaterial was transformed into the material to allow for evil, why Christian virtue is absolutely necessary for young men to successfully take their country back, how we're all going to die, how to prepare for that part including the part where i give you a free book if you want it so this is also important so do stay tuned I had a fantastic thanksgiving and we are now going to Stick get into some very important topics that i think will answer a lot of questions that we've all had in the backs of our minds but that sure. we didn't really think to ask or quite know how to articulate especially in terms of the constitution and the second amendment because as i've gotten older and i've thought about things more it's been very difficult for me to buy into this conservative tendency to sort of you know idolize the constitution and the second amendment oh, well the problem is we just didn't listen to the constitution well the second amendment is the only reason we'll never have a tyrannical government like i i promise you i promise you that you can't provide to me an objection that I haven't already thought of, and I would urge you instead to consider how honestly you can still say. I. It's just so funny to me how smart he thinks he is. Like, he doesn't have a bit of humility. Like, I promise you, I've already thought about anything that you could possibly think about. Is a wild thing to say. You know what I mean? It's just so interesting. Because John is not a particularly bright guy. He's just. He's, I will say his one skill is he is good at speaking without saying, um, that's a good skill. I say, um, a lot. Good job, John. Say these things after the last two or so years of the American experience. And when we talk momentarily about the actual nature of how our government maintains power and the Constitution and the Second Amendment, I think that you'll find that discussion to be much more satisfying than the same tired excuses that we've heard from the bumper sticker crowd. But anyways, given that this country was built by Christian men, to which, of course, the objection...
question is always going to be, well, this guy had an affair. Well, well, this guy did a bad thing. Yeah, but he probably repented for it and at least acknowledged that it was wrong. Whereas your faction seeks to usher in evil through the abandonment of the immaterial by publishing articles saying, well, science says there's nothing wrong with casual sex. Well, You should, you should have more sex. You'd calm down a little bit. Probably. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to be able to fit in any sex today. I think it's, I don't think it's in my, in my, in the cards for me, but maybe. <laughs> Speaking of which, thanks for Meek for Meek. How do you say, what do you want me to say? Meek, I, I keep saying Meek, but is it, is it Meek, Meekquarius? Meekquarius? Um, Speaking of which, John dropped out of community college twice, and he says that he hates college grads because people made fun of him when he didn't get into college he wanted to go to. It's all cope. Well, of course it's cope. Say meek. You got it. Um, I, that That's not surprising to me. I don't know if that's true, but that's uh, that tracks with his personality. Like he's, he's upset he's spaghetti at people that have an education and that completed it. That makes sense. He's not a very bright fella. He comes across like he could be bright. Because, again, he, he's good at speaking, and that's pretty much it. But, like, come on, dude. <laughs> I don't think anyone needs to peg him. Science says morality is subjective. We're going to dissect this a little bit later. But okay. in summary, you're stupid. The point being that this country was built by okay. men who are virtually all Christian, with a handful of exceptions, if that. <clears throat> it was built by, by African labor that was stolen and exploited and then subjugated. That That's really the answer to the question. So. And because of this, Christianity was the dominant religion and had the primary impact on the ethics, the culture, and the politics of this nation. Sure. And this calls back to the quote from earlier. The, the, the politics and the ethics of this country. I agree that uh, Christianity is complicit in the chattel slavery of a population of human beings for hundreds of years in America. I agree. That those who think that religion and politics aren't linked understand neither. And this is true because what religion is, by definition, is an understanding of how things are. And what politics is, by definition, is an understanding of how things ought to be. And if you understand how things are, then you necessarily understand how things ought to be because your understanding mm. of how things are informs that. That's not really the that's not really the truth, John. If that was the truth, then you would agree with with me, right? Like understanding how things are, and I disagree on how things ought to be. Like, like that's just a bad. That's just a bad. That's not really logic at all. This is why anyone who claims to be a Christian and who says things like, "Well, I don't let my religion inform my political beliefs," is misguided because what they're basically doing is masturbating to this idea of the comfortable, unbiased, secular society and their allegiance to that above their allegiance to their literal creator, which is a form of pride, which of course is a sin. They refuse to sacrifice their public perception by taking the unpopular but still correct approach by acknowledging that religious beliefs and political beliefs are necessarily intertwined. And they instead opt to maintain this farce of impartiality because they think it makes them appear smarter, more educated, more just, more balanced or whatever. My case was somewhat unique. My politics actually came first. And then I realized that Christianity was identical to my moral compass. And then I read in the Bible that God inscribes morality onto all of our hearts. And I was like, oh, that's how that happened. Like, I always just strongly detested degenerate behavior, just instinctively. I am instinctively based because my parents never really <sighs> sat me down and said, yeah. God, he's so fucking weird. Like, what a weird fucking thing to say to people. I have always instinctively... <laughs> been anti-degeneracy like how do you even know like what a weird fucking guy there's okay all right speculation he's overcompensating for whatever his degeneracy is like whatever he's got going on that he's hiding come on this guy this guy is absolutely absolutely closeted in some form of his life right i don't know if that means he's gay or whatever doesn't have to Something he considers degenerate, he finds in himself. And that's going to come out someday. Like, it, it, there's just, I've always hated, well, it means that you've been thinking about degeneracy for quite some time in your life, hasn't it? Pretty odd. Pretty odd stuff. <laughs> 